birth of a nation. Then, Gone with the Wind, 2001, A Space Odyssey, Love Story. See you next Wednesday. And now, Schluck! Schluck! When I discover who or what is responsible for this, they're going to be in big trouble. Ivan, radio headquarters. Putzman, live. And never has a word been so full of meaning. Live from Kablonsky Peace Park, on location with our WAOH TV6 mobile unit, bringing you the latest news on the most recent and perhaps most horrendous scene of destruction so far in the recent rash of the unsolved banana murders in our community. So-called because of the banana peels usually found on the scene of the crime. It seems that the entire Canyon Valley Metaphysical Bowling Society's annual picnic was taken by surprise this morning. And apparently no one survived whatever ghastly thing attacked them. The full body count so far is an amazing 239. Although there is some disagreement on that depressing figure, it seems that several cadavers were so badly torn apart that it will be quite impossible to ascertain exactly how many individuals those pieces belong to. Oh, I've just been handed a note here. From what I understand, these grisly relics of death have been put into plastic bags or baggies and are to be sorted out back at the morgue. 
Now it says here that the first viewer to send in a correct estimate on exactly how many individuals those baggies contain... Could we have a shot of the baggies, please? ...will win a free Kentucky chicken dinner with all the trimmings... ...and enough cola for a family of six. So be sure to send your entries right away to... ...Body Count Contest, care of Joe Putzman, Wao TV, Channel 6. Your community-minded station. But there seems to be some activity over here. I'll make my way toward it. What are you trying to say? What, what was it? Was it bigger than a bread box? Uh, sounds like, sounds like. Title of a movie? Title of a book? Speak up, man! Bananas! Bananas! Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to approach Detective Sergeant Wino, who has been placed in charge of this particular case. Possibly the most bizarre and bloody series of crimes in history. Excuse me, Detective Sergeant Wino. I'm Joe Putzman. I was wondering if you'd like to reassure our viewing audience that this reign of terror in our town will soon be over. That these ghastly series of, of banana murders will soon cease. Can you tell us anything? Give us one ray of hope that our streets will soon be safe to walk again. No. Well, uh, surely you have some sort of lead, some hunch you're following? We haven't a clue. And I would say this thing's gonna get a lot worse before it gets better. Hundreds more may die, in fact, thousands. If it weren't for my job, I wouldn't even go out of my house until this whole thing is over. These banana murders are really strange. Well, then, what you're saying, Detective Sergeant Wino, is that the situation is totally out of control. Yes. Thank you for those encouraging words, Detective Sergeant Wino. Well, I guess that just about winds it up here at Kavlonsky Peace Park. Uh, be sure and mail your estimate to Body Count Contest, care of Joe Putzman, WAOH-TV, Channel 6, your community-minded station. And uh, be sure to watch the dinnertime movie tonight at 6 on 6. Tonight, it's See You Next Wednesday, starring Charles Lawton, Claudette Colbert, and Mickey Rooney. A fun-filled musical frolic through the leper colonies of Europe during the Thirty Years' War. Well, that's all for now. And this is Joe Putzman saying, have a happy... Boy, I can't wait until the big dance. It's going to be so far out. You know, I'm on the decorating committee, and we can't decide whether to do the gym in psychedelic or Hawaiian. <laughs> well, this is one high school dance that's going to be truly fun. I'm bringing all my records. Bobby Sherman, the Monkees, Cliff Richards, the Archies, the Delphonics, Frank Zappa, Pat Boone. I hope Mindy's eyes are better for the dance. You mean Mindy? Blind Mindy? But she's been blind ever since her accident in the eighth grade. Cleverness. Mindy went into eye surgery three or four days ago. And if that doctor knows what he's doing, when the bandages are removed, she should be able to see. I didn't know that. She's been Cal's girlfriend for two years, and she's never even seen him. Yeah, well, he doesn't have to worry. Cal is just the grooviest looking guy in the whole school. Oh, I see. Thanks a lot. Oh, come on, Bobby. You know I think you're good looking. I mean, I'm going steady with you, aren't I? I wouldn't be wearing your pin if you look like this. Come from. Uh, look, banana peel. Listen, you guys. I think this is the work of the banana killer. Well, whoever did it obviously is bananas. Well, come on, we better go to the police. Right. No. Wait a minute. I think we should take a look around. I mean, what if the banana killer is looking at us right at this moment? Boy. Don't be a moron, Billy. We gotta get out of here. Ah, uh, don't be a sissy, Bobby. Hey, banana killer! We got Bay Ray over here! Let's go. Come on, Billy. What could possibly happen to all four of us? I mean, whoa! Billy, are you all right? Hey, you guys, come on down here. It's out of sight. Well, what's down there? A whole cave thing. Out of sight. And you're out of your mind. What do you think, Barbara? I don't know. What do you think, Betty? I don't know. What do you think, Bobby? I don't know. What do you think, Barbara? I don't know. What do you think, Bobby? Okay, Billy. Betty, Barbara, and I are going to come on down. Uh... 
Gee, it's so dark in here. Usually is dark in underground caves. I wish you wouldn't do that. Not blood. Bones. Betty. Barbara. Billy. Banana. Bones. Blood. Bananas. Billy. There's got to be something down here, and I'm going to find out what. Let's just get out of here. I've got such a case of the creeps. Look, that trail of blood leads off into the darkness. Right. I wouldn't go if I were you. Well, you're not me, Bobby. You stay here with Barbara and Betty. Be careful, Billy! better go to the police. Wrong. I'm gonna go see what's the matter. Wait. Um, excuse me, have you seen... Kids, this is all very interesting, but how do I know you're telling me the truth? Listen, I think we've trapped this banana killer. I want eight squad cars and three men outside right away. No, make that the tactical squad and the fire engine. No, stick to the cars and the men and ration out a lot of weapons, guns, clubs, tear gas, things like that. Got that? So that's eight men, three patrol cars, hold the fire engine, hold the tax squad, and steady on the weapons. Right. And uh, call Professor Schlivovitz at the university. Tell him to meet me at the site. We'll see whether that little theory of his is correct. What did you say? I said yes, sir. Oh, that's what I thought you said. That's what I did say. That will be quite enough, Gloria. I'm leaving the office in three minutes. I want everything ready and waiting. Yes, sir.
So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The scene is tense here as we wait to see if the infamous banana killer, responsible for 789 deaths in our community in the last three weeks, is really in that opening. Only time will tell. Oh, I see that Professor Schlibovitz has arrived. Well, as you know, Professor Schlibovitz has voiced his theory about these banana killings for the last three weeks, ever since he examined the first victim. Excuse me, Professor Schlibowitz. I am Joe Putzman. I was wondering if you would care to comment on just what you expect to find down there today. Certainly. For much of the long span of its history, our planet lay barren and lifeless. The waters of its oceans rose and fell in tides and stirred under the winds. But in them, nothing moved. Above them loom the continents, bleak as the landscapes of the moon. Perhaps as much as two and a half billion years ago, life mysteriously appeared in the waters. Tiny one-celled life forms that could truly be called living. Well, whole bunches of millions of years went by. Reptiles developed and huge dinosaurs roamed the earth. The ferocious Allosaurus the gentle and dumb Brontosaurus, the fire-breathing Godzilla. Soon, however, even these majestic creatures gave way to the constant parade that is evolution to the age of the mammals. These warm-blooded animals survive until almost men-like creatures appear. However, even these early human-appearing beings trembled before the monarch of all he surveyed, the Simeon Gigantis or Kong, king of the Pliocene and Pleistocene areas. But then we come to the mystery. What stages of life were there between these early human-appearing beings and true men? We have evidence of the Homo erectus. The what? Homo erectus, the Neanderthal and Cro-Magnon man. And you've only to look about you to see the modern Homo sapien that nature took literally an eternity to perfect. What of that piece of the puzzle that's missing? That vacant place, that empty spot, that blank page, that hollow shell, that void in our knowledge of the evolutionary chain. That missing link. But surely, Professor Schlebowitz. No, that's uh, Professor Shirley Schlebowitz. A strange quirk of my mother's. Oh. Well, then what you are saying, Shirley, is that you believe some sort of prehistoric monster is responsible for the recent destruction in our community. That the banana killer is, in reality, the missing link. Yes. I'm certain that what awaits us down there is, in actuality, the Schlockthropus, or Schlock, usually referred to as the missing link, or Yeti. I believe we're on the brink of the greatest scientific breakthrough in the last eight or nine weeks. But surely... How has this schlock been able to survive all these millions of years? Honey, you should ask that. <laughs> My theory is that millions of years ago, our friend Schlock was bopping along through the primeval jungles looking for food. He spies a lovely bunch of bananas hanging seductively from a branch over the river. Schlock finds himself in much the same situation as the fabled fox and the grapes. The bananas are just out of his reach, so with a mighty leap, Schlock jumps for them, but misses and lands in the river. Just then along comes the Ice Age, and Schlock lies frozen for these past 20 million years. Dr. Evloff of, the, of UCLA has had great success reanimating sperms after a long period of intense cold. Bears hibernate for winters. Why not Schlock for centuries? Thank you very much, Shirley. Have a safe journey and good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard Professor Shirley Schlebowitz of the university voice his theory on just what menacing secret that hole contains. Excuse me once again, Professor. Uh, what is the purpose of that peculiar headgear? This particular helmet was designed by Dr. Haywood Floyd Jerome of the Acme Research Group. Well, yes, I see, but uh, why is it you're wearing it? I have no idea. Well, there goes a fine man, a brave man, and one swell guy. 
All the hopes and good wishes of our community go with Shirley Schliebowitz. There is nothing to do now but wait. Ready. The Pope, Professor. Thank you. Hold it steady. I am holding it. Just steady there. While we are waiting, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to announce that there has been a winner in our Channel 6 body count contest. Mrs. Uh, Leroy Bynerman of uh, Canyon Valley. And we are privileged to have Mrs. Bynerman with us here today. Just how many bodies were in those bags, Mrs. Bynerman? Four. That's right. However did you guess? Oh, I don't know. I just guessed. Well, you guessed correctly. And that Kentucky chicken dinner is yours. Well, I'm as pleased as Punch. Uh, and as many don't you get a haircut? Why don't you get a height. job? Yes. Oh, I understand that you're in the drama department. Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, I, I run the drama department. Well, isn't that wonderful? I've seen some of those productions. Boy, are they marvelous. Oh, They're yes. absolutely terrific. Do you and. Like Oh, oh I'm Spider-Man. so pleased. That's so Oh, terrifying. and I tell you one thing. I understand that you're doing a very new production. And as you already know, ladies and gentlemen, Mrs. Bynerman is also the sponsor of the upcoming big school dance. Oh, yes, we're all terribly excited about that. Especially me, because my daughter Mindy gets out of the hospital tomorrow, and we're hoping she'll be able to see for the first time in three years. Well, isn't that well, congratulations, Mrs. Bynerman, and good luck to you and your daughter. Oh, and by the way, if Mindy's eyesight is going to be restored, she might like to see uh, tomorrow evening's dinnertime movie at 6 on 6. Tomorrow evening's film is See You Next Wednesday, starring Jimmy Stewart, Donna Reed, and Stymie Beard in an action-packed war drama of defrocked missionaries in the Belgian Congo. Well... We are still awaiting word from P- Professor Schlibowitz. Uh, and let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the scene here is tense. Uh, well, I think I'll interview some of the, uh, some of the crowd. Well, how do you do, sir? Uh, what do you think? Well, my God, is that a gorilla suit? Well, this is fantastic. Is that, is that some sort of fraternity stunt? Well, it's ah. ingenious. Well, no. Ah. You're for real. What? You're the monster. Oh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, Channel 6 is proud to be the first to bring you Schluck, the missing link. Tell me, Schluck, are you really the banana killer? I, I'm Joe Putman. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to counsel of your choice or by appointment of the court. You may make one telephone call.
What do you think of that banana killer thing, anyway? Well, I agree with that professor. I read once in Amazing Virility magazine about that Bigfoot thing up north. It sounded genuine to me. That, my friend, is because you are a moron. Well, if I'm a moron, then what's that?
Well, it won't be long now, dear. In a few days, you'll see what your cow really looks like. Oh, I already know his soul, Mom, and it's beautiful. Yes, well... You know, we're having a big dance in a few days, Doctor, and we want to uh, have her have a lot of rest before it goes. Here's the car right here, Doctor. Well, goodbye, Miss uh, Nurse. Miss Nurse. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. You've been so kind. Oh, here, darling. reading the homework assignment. Oh, Cal, you're so considerate. Why are you so nice to me? <gasps> oh, that's enough of that now, kids. Cal, you'll have to go. Mindy's got to rest. Okay, I'll see you guys. Cal, thanks for helping me with my homework. He's gone, dear. Why don't you go out in the backyard and rest? The fresh air will do you good. Doggy, hi. What's your name? Should we name you? We'll call you Willie. That's a good name. We'll call you Willie. Call you Willie, little dog. You want to play? Here, fetch the stick. See the stick? Okay, go get it. Go on. Go on, Willie. Go get the stick. Go on. Go on. Go on, Willie dog. Go on. Go for the stick. Come on, you did it last time. Come on, Willy Doggy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, okay. Get it again. Come on. Come on back with it. Come on, bring it back. Come on. Hurry back. Come on. Go on. dog you are. What a funny dog. Good fella. Hey, okay. Okay, I know you like playing. Go on. Next time I'll throw it further. Go on. Go on, good dog. Go on, good dog. Go on. Okay. Oh, I 
I've never met a dog like you, little dog. Go on, Willie. You never get tired, do you, good dog? Come on, bring it back. Come on. Come on. Okay. Let's go. Come on. Oh, you're so quick. What a good dog. What a good dog. Okay. Go on. Go get it. Mindy. Come on, bring it back. Come, come, come on, back. Willie, come on, boy. Well, hurry up, Mindy. It's getting chilly. It's almost time for dinner. Coming, Mom. Not at all. Well, do you think you'll feel well enough to go to the big dance tomorrow night? Oh, yes, of course. How do you feel? I feel as good as I look. I'm going to go in the backyard and look and see if my friend Willie's there. Willie? Oh, it's just some dog she saw playing in the, in the backyard. But I didn't see it. Well, I did, and I'm going to go look right now. It looks like your friend Willie isn't here. But he was here yesterday. I believe you. I'm going to go, okay? I'll pick you up tomorrow, 7.30 for the dance. Okay, see you tomorrow.
Oh, how nice to see you. Is this one of your little friends from school? Does it matter? Get the flares out of the car! Inside. Right, get lost. Men, this is the opportunity we've been waiting for. We've got this thing where we want it. Ivan, get the box. According to Professor Slivovitz, this thing has been frozen in ice for 20 million years. So I figure it must be lonely. And I had the boys at the lab make this thing up. Now, I'm gonna go in and lure out that schlock thing. First thing out that door, fire. Shoot to kill. I'm gonna give Ivan this whistle, and when he blows it, that's your signal to fire. Got that? Got that? Guns ready? Okay. <laughs>
May I help you? Would you believe me if I told you there was something inside of that rock we found tonight? Something that could wipe out this whole town? Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, knock it off! Pardon me. Go ahead, Steve. Excuse me. Hey, Pardon me. Hey, Pardon me. Hey, Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Pardon me. Thank you. Excuse. Excuse me. Well, what is it? I don't know. But one thing's for sure. If it can kill Dr. Howell, it can kill somebody else. Well, what do you want us to do, Steve? All right. We're going to find this thing. We're going to make people believe us. Let's try Johnsonville again, Richie. Okay. Ah! Saw a strange one. Excuse me. Excuse oh, way back here. Excuse me. Mr. Cody there. First thing I've ever seen. The TV was flying away. The cash register was sitting there with all the money still in it. Nobody around. <laughs>
won't do any good. Why did the king men have to die? There's a time for everything. The caveman slept all those years. And then one day he awoke like Rip Van Winkle. And found the world so changed that he didn't belong in it anymore. How would you like it if you woke in the 21st century? No house, no friends, even the town gone. Oh, just a strange world. I would like it. <laughs> You really mean Gosh, Mrs. Bynerman, you must have been scared to death. Oh, yes. Well, I, I was a little anxious. Yes. Well, I think both you and Mindy are very brave. Well, nothing must interfere with this dance tonight. Detective Sergeant Rhino has been kind enough to offer us four policemen for outside the gym. Oh, this is going to be the best dance that Canyon Valley High School has ever had. <laughs> Hey, Slick, I was thinking I'd go down to Paul's for a drink. 
You want to stay here and play the piano? Or you want to go with me? I want to stay here and play the piano. I'll take you over there. Sit down, man. Do this. Joyce, 
Ernie. Ernie. What? Joyce. Watch my hands. Keep your hands down, Ernie. Now look, Joyce. I kicked to a fancy restaurant. I bought six fifty on the dinner. I go to the roller derby. We have a great time. Now I came through, baby. How about you? Ernie, that's just too bad. Hey! Joyce! Ow! <clears throat> Ain't no brawl ever did that to Ernie Kravitz. No way. Helmet. I've seen better legs at the health club. Darling, you have no need to worry with those four officers outside. Mindy, stop worrying. Everything's going to be okay. Now, really, Mindy, stop fretting. Everything's going to be okay. Don't be alarmed, but there's a very large... How do you feel, Mindy? Oh, I feel a lot more like I do now than I did when I got here. Hey, would you like something to drink? Yes, please.
Ivan, this thing is getting out of hand. Call out the National Guard. No, that thing has Mindy. I know, son, but there's nothing we can do now but wait till the National Guard gets here. Detective Sergeant, why not? Yeah, okay. Where are the kids? What are they doing? Running their draft cards? Huh? Rioting? Wearing that damn long hair? That's what really gripes me, that long hair. Say, aren't you the barber from down on 3rd Street? Yeah, that's right. You need a trim. Yeah. I was thinking of cutting my sideburns. Yeah, we can style them. Why don't you come in uh, and have a shampoo, too? Say about 4 o'clock Monday, huh? Uh, Monday's no good. What about Wednesday? Can you guys discuss the haircuts later? That thing's got Mindy. Yeah, speaking of haircuts, you punk. Now, all right, let's cool it. Now, Cal, we don't even know where this thing is, much less how to find it. Look! All right, men, let him have it. Don't hold it! You can't shoot like that thing's got Mindy. Why not? Well, give us some flares. You got some flares? Ivan? Flare. All right, men, drop your rifles. It's over, Mindy. It's over, and I'm sorry. Love means never having to say you're sorry. <laughs> well, looks like.
like the guns got him. No. Twas beauty killed the beast. What's wrong with 